This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this short video was not intended to be published originally, but I received an email this evening from a gentleman who claimed that either there was an error in SimSmith or there was an error in how the Smith chart works or something like that. And the chances of those things being true, I thought initially was pretty low, and I still believe it to be zero now. But uh, nevertheless, he got my attention. And the problem he had posed to me was pretty complicated, but I was able to simplify it to something that made equal sense to what he was trying to say. But fundamentally, let's look at this, this circuit very quickly here. We have a 50 ohm load, and we have a 90 degree piece of 200, 200 ohm transmission line. I made the transmission line of a velocity factor of one and, and loss of zero, but that really doesn't affect anything. That just affects the length, uh, the physical length that you have to put into the formula here. But 90 degrees on this piece of transmission line gives us a half a rotation on the Smith chart. And that's exactly what you would expect. And of course, if we were to make this 180 degrees, we would find full revolution. And the point comes back exactly where it started because there's no loss in the circuit. Now, the problem he was having was the fact that when I make this 45 degrees, it's not a quarter of a rotation, but it's considerably more. And his belief was that there was an error in SimSmith um, because of that. And if I look at this point here and I get the, the data for it, it's 94.1 plus J176. Now notice how this appears to be an incorrect amount of rotation. We're always told that the rotation is linear with the length of the transmission line. And that is true. If I change the reference impedance on this Smith chart to be 200 ohms, now I have a quarter of a revolution. Again, this point up here, if I click on it once, once again, is 94.1 plus J176. Sim Smith is doing the math correctly. And I'll show in a minute that LT Spice comes up with the same answer also. But when you plot it, you have to be careful about how the rotation looks. So when we go back here to a 50 ohm impedance, we see it looking like more than half a revolution. If we were to change this to be, say, a, a 500 ohm impedance, we would see it to be less than a quarter of a revolution. And this is perfectly normal, even though it's uh, contrary to uh, what you've, you might think of as being normal. Now, if we make this 50 ohm transmission line down here in a 50 ohm circuit, we see no rotation at all. But if we start our impedance at, uh, say, 20 ohms, we see our quarter of a revolution just like we'd expect. So a, a piece of transmission line that's the same impedance as the reference impedance for the Smith chart works, works correctly. But in other cases, it doesn't appear to, uh, even though, even though you're, give, you're getting the right answer back. And um, this is always the way it's been. I had known this. Uh, it took a while for me to um, decipher what he was saying. But I just thought I'd mention this because this is something that I think uh, would be confusing to a lot of people if you ran into this. And here's the same circuit being simulated in LT Spice. I start off with a one volt generator, 10 megahertz sine wave. I put it through a one micro ohm resistor. And the reason for doing that is so that I can get the direction of the current to match the direction of the voltage here. I plot the voltage, I plot the current, I divide the two and I can get the impedance looking into the, into the circuit. The circuit is the same as we saw in SimSmith, 50 ohm load, a 12 and a half nanosecond piece of uh, 200 ohm transmission line. Uh, 10 megahertz is 100 nanoseconds, so 12 and a half nanoseconds is an eighth of a wavelength, which is 45 degrees. And let's see what we get. So we'll run this again, and we'll look at the two plots. Um, cursor 1 is set up for the zero crossing on the voltage waveform, and cursor 2 is set up for zero crossing on the current waveform. And we see the voltage leading the current. That means it's an inductive impedance. The magnitude of, of Z is voltage divided by current, one volt divided by um, basically, basically five milliamps, which is 200 ohms. So the magnitude is 200 ohms. The phase angle between here and here is uh, it's 17.22 nanoseconds. 
If we take 17.22 nanoseconds, divide that by 100 nanoseconds, which is the period of a 10 megahertz waveform, multiply that times 360 degrees, we come up with a phase angle of 61.8 degrees. And if we take a magnitude and phase of impedance being 200 ohms and a magnitude of 61.8 degrees, and convert that to rectangular coordinates, we come up with 94.1 plus J176, which is exactly what we saw uh, in SimSmith. So the calculation is correct, the plotting in SimSmith is correct, and it's just people's perceptions that, in all cases, a fractional piece of uh, a transmission line represents the, the, the same fractional rotation on a Smith chart, which is, which is not true. Anyways, I thought other people might find this interesting, and I'll bet there's some people out there didn't understand this. Uh, I probably didn't realize this before I got involved with debugging SimSmith, oh, about five years ago, I guess it would be by now, maybe four or five years ago. Um, I just assumed they were the same too, and I hadn't done enough enough calculations manually that, uh, to, ever, to ever experience that. Anyways, leave me a comment if you fell f would have fallen for this also. Um, there's no, um, you know, there's no shame in being and not knowing stuff. Um, anyways, that's why I did the video. Hope everyone enjoyed it, and uh, there'll be more. Thanks again.